Howdy. There is plenty of Linux. Let's find out which one is making the most of your hardware. A suitable group of contestants for a comparison test can be found at DistroWatch. 20 contestants fight against each other, the time, the evil. The test parkour consists of three disciplines. The first is Geekbench 5. The main purpose of this is to measure the performance of the CPU. Second is Start the GIMP. This examines the reading on ca and caching of random files. As a test value, I choose the result of the second run. Number three, open a project in Android Studio. A daily scenario for me. Countless small and large files are read and created. There is also a lot to be expected. The whole thing requires a bit of patience, even on powerful computers. Maybe that's why this test exists. The test setup's virtual hardware. I install the respective Linux in a virtual machine. The machine gets a CPU, 4 gig of RAM, the minimum for Android Studio and 30 GB SSD storage space with a fixed size. The slim setup is intended to highlight differences in the efficiency of the test candidates. Some contestants have not been qualified. Unfortunately, Garuda could not qualify. The design temporarily blinded the testers. Also not at the start is open to the Tumbleweed and Fedora, two rolling release models. Unfortunately, the VM could not be started with reasonable effort. The test field itself. Let's start from behind. Place number 19 is Ubuntu Budgie. Ubuntu is available in various flavors. The Budgie is cute but not, not very powerful. They better bring something like Ubuntu Eagle next time. On place number 18 is Zorin OS Core. Zorin is based on Ubuntu. The core version comes with GNOME as a desktop. For all the people who think I didn't pronounce GNOME as it should be, better focus on the test itself. GNOME is one of the heavyweight desktop environments. Zorin has heavily modified GNOME for their Linux to make it look and feel more like Windows does. The test result should have been better, just like Windows. 17. Manjaro LXQT. Manjaro is based on Arch Linux. Arch follows the rolling release model. You get new features almost every day and new bugs too. Manjaro brings XFCE as default, but this is the even easier LXQT desktop environment. LXQT is something like a KDE or Plasma Lite. Manjaro LXQT appears only as a community edition. The result of my test falls short of my expectations. 16. Solos is not based on Debian, Ubuntu or Arch. It is an in-house development and brings the in-house budgie with it. Again, the budgie doesn't look great. On number 15 we've got Kubuntu. It is an Ubuntu with Plasma desktop. Plasma or KDE is heavyweight. It's extremely customizable and comfortable. If you don't like it, you haven't adjusted it enough yet. With Dolphin as the file manager, KDE friends get the most powerful graphical file manager in the Linux world. The resource consumption in terms of memory is remarkably low, but the performance lags behind other systems in my ranking. Number 14, Pop OS, again based on Ubuntu. An adapted GNOME serves as the surface with the ineffective Nautilus as a file manager. I've heard housewives whine about how primitive Nautilus is. Number 13, Endeavor OS with KDE. It's based on Arch, 
with Plasma as desktop. The installation is easily customizable. Everything looks well thought out and slim. The result, however, should have been better. Maybe Plasma is just too heavy after all. Too bad. On number 12 we've got KDE Neon, another Linux with a Plasma desktop, or should I say the Linux distro with Plasma. KDE Neon is the reference for KDE. It is based on Ubuntu LTS. On this established basis the desktop is constantly updated. The user must or may look forward to regular updates. updates. KDE Neon deserves respect it is the top ranked KDE in this test. 11. Manjaro XFCE. Manjaro with Arch customized for even beginners as a rolling release has XFCE as default. I like Manjaro, XFCE has been nicely adjusted. Everything feels right. The version with KDE was less optimized for me. I also had serious bugs with display settings after standby and with Bluetooth. Number 10 is Mint Cinnamon. Um, we are in 10th place in the middle of this test. Another candidate with Ubuntu. On top of that there is the desktop environment Cinnamon. An offshoot of GNOMES 2 developed by the Linux Mint team. I spent a certain amount of time with the Linux Mint. It never bothered me. I would describe the design as out outdated by now. The Nemo file manager offers more than GNOME's Nautilus, but far less than KDE's Dolphin. Number 9. Ubuntu this time comes in person. Many who think of Linux think of Ubuntu. For perhaps most of them it is the introduction to Linux. Ubuntu has done a lot for the spread of Linux and maybe one or the other against it. It is based on Debian. An adapted GNOME serves as the desktop surface. It is heavy, poor in function, unwilling to be customized, but I do really like the hairy hippo. Number 8 is Xubuntu. Another of the many Ubuntu flavors. Ubuntu with XFCE. I don't really remember it. Maybe a good sign or at least not a bad one. Number 7. Elementary OS. The Mac clone. Simple in design, adaptability and functionality. Just like the great example from Copertino. For me uninteresting but in search of the holy grail I looked at it. The, basis, the base here is also Ubuntu. The in-house developed GTK3 based Pentium serves as the desktop environment. The file manager is of remarkable simpli simplicity. Our number 6 is MX Linux, the eternal number 1 at DistroWatch. What's up? Is it really that good? I was greeted with the ugliest wallpaper that the computer world has seen in 20 years, even for Linux beauty standards. But I don't want to be one of those who complain about RAM usage, wallpaper, installed or not yet installed applications. MX has the conservative Debian as its base, but spices it all up with up-to-date application packages and some self-made tools for administration and customization. I found the KDA version immature, but I have nothing to complain about, about with the default desktop. On number 5 is Debian itself. Debian, whoever attaches particular importance to stability, cannot ignore Debian. It is the base for Ubuntu and several other distros. Sort of vanilla GNOME is used as standard desktop. GNOME is one of the heavyweights among desktop environments with little customizability. I think GNOME is pretty nice to look at, but I don't want have to work with it. It's above it's all above the file manager Nautilus with its incredible puny range of functions that makes GNOME unusable for me. Debian deserves a special mention as it has the top ranked GNOME in my little test. Number 4 is Zorin OS Lite. 
Zorin has managed to make the old XFCE look nice and elegant, even more than Manjaro and MX Linux. Under the polished hood there is, you guessed it, Ubuntu. They do well in this test. The next one is Linux Mint Mate. Here too, Mint uses Ubuntu as a substructure. Mate is a further development fork of GNOME 2. It is quite lightweight and takes third place in my ranking. I don't like it optically. It's all functional, I would say. On the second place, we have Linux Lite. Linux Lite is also based on Ubuntu. The popular XFCE is used as the desktop environment. XFCE is the default desktops with MX Linux and Manjaro. They lead the distro watch ranking for a long time. Why use XFCE when there is also KDE, I thought for a long time. Yes, it's almost a customizable as KDE, less convenient, but it is fast. With some effort, it is possible for XFCE to look pretty. Before we get to number one, I will present the last one in this test. It's Windows 10 as we know it, completely and sluggishly. It lags far behind all the others in all three disciplines. The GIMP may not be optimized for Windows, but then neither Whittlebox, Geekbench and Android Studio. What would applications be that are optimized for Windows? Microsoft Office or gaming may be doing just fine. Let me proudly present you the first place in this test. Number one in this test surprised myself. It slipped in more by chance or for the sake of completeness and surprised me with its strong performance. Peppermint OS is based on Ubuntu LTS and has one of the lightest desktop environments with LXDE. LXDE is light like a feather and popular even on Raspberry Pis. For me, it is too economical even with a lot of adjustment afford, but it's quick. The, in the interface feels damn nimble even on my lean VM. Ladies and gentlemen, now the moment you've all been waiting for. When I looked at which test result was on which basis, then I got this ranking. Debian Ubuntu seems more sporty than Arch. The respective results depends at least as much on the desktop surface used. Lighter is faster most of the time. As a further component with regard to the result, the implementation of everything is of course important. I leave it up to you to judge the numbers by yourself. This is the overview result table. Well friends, that's how it looks. There are bare numbers and truths. But when I'm talking about truth, I don't want to get unmentioned that everything always has different sides. At least one that I don't see, one that you don't see and one that neither of us sees. Finally, a few words for the big loser in these tests. The result is as expected. Thanks Windows anyway, we used to have a good time. Microsoft wants to make money, Linux wants to make software. Linux for me brought the fun back into computing. Money and fun can sometimes not be reconciled. Last last words. My big thanks and respect goes to the countless hardworking, often voluntary developers of all the great Linux around the world. All of the distributions tested are good in their own way. <laughs>